Eternal God, we're thankful this, that you've allowed us this privilege to come and worship you together this morning. For this is the day you have created, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would save this morning, you would deliver and set free this morning. I pray, Lord God, that the word that will go forth would speak to the immediate needs of those who are assembled here. Speak ever so clearly. I pray, God, for this nation in which we live. I pray, God, that you would continue to show your kindness towards us, forgiving us of our sins and all of our unrighteousness. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. This difficult time. Call your attention to the New Testament. Book of Peter, 2 Peter, chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3 and I want to read verse beginning with verse 8 reading through verse 10 third chapter 2 Peter but beloved do not forget this one thing that with the Lord one day is a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises as some count slackness, but is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with the great noise. The elements will melt with fervent heat both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. I want to use for a, a subject this morning, this thought came to me this week, timing is everything. Timing is everything. Let us pray. Father, we're here because of you, because of your goodness, because of your grace. There is no one like you, no one to be compared to you. Speak now. Speak to your people. Consecrate me. Let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and redeemer. Let the church say amen. Timing is everything. In the midst of hardship, we tend to feel our prayers and cries to God aren't being heard because we may not see immediate change in our situations. This is a misconception of how our relationship with God actually should be. We are to put our trust into God's hand 
After all, God is greater than our hearts. And he knows everything, says 1 John 3 and 20. Just because we do not see an immediate change does not mean God never heard you. Because he has. Joseph was around 17 years old when God gave him the dream of his destiny. He was 30 when he became governor of Egypt. Timing is everything. God will test you in many ways, but the biggest test is time. Most scholars believe that David was between the age of 8 and 15 when he was first anointed by Samuel. He was 30 years old when he became king of Israel. Timing is everything. Amen. Josiah was eight years of age when he became king of Israel. What we may comprehend as seeing a slow response by God, or God not listening to us, we are not to take time lightly because God is patient with us and we in return should be patient with God timing is everything the reason why you are here this morning is because the time is right God assigned this moment God assigned this day for you to assemble here we're not knowing one year ago, this very day, that we would have to have a worship here in the parking lot. Timing is everything. It is very easy to compare ourselves to others and wonder why some things have come through for them, but it has yet to happen for us. I wondered this morning, how many of you have been in a situation where you wondered why God has not responded to your petition. It's like the farmer who plants a seed. He must plant with anticipation, but he must wait patiently for the harvest. Timing is everything. We need to understand that there's a purpose and reason for some things not happening or not changing. I feel it is us that need to change. And that change starts through repentance, turning from sin, turning from unrighteousness, turning to Christ and trusting him with your souls. Why should the Lord be so long in his coming I don't know about you, but looking at the condition of the world, part of my prayer has been, come Lord Jesus. But the Lord has reminded me, timing is everything. Peter offers two answers. First, God counts time differently than we do. Once again, Peter appeals to the memory of his audience. Do not forget this one thing, that in the last days, scoffers will come. There are those people that are telling us even now that things are going to remain like they are. But I just want you to understand this morning that God is behind the scenes working things out for his glory. But his timing is what is important. We should recall Psalms 90 and 4, which Peter quotes here. We should see time against time but God sees time against eternity in fact only time for us is very short but when you measure time against eternity eternity cannot be 
measured by time. This is what Peter said. Peter says here, Beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. What Peter is conveying here, and I'm conveying to you, time is very important. Timing is everything. Certainly we want Jesus to return. And I'm praying, come Lord Jesus. But Peter is simply saying, God has an eternal plan that's greater than time. He does not want to see one soul lost. One person. Not come to repentance. This is a great time in the history of the church. If you do not know Jesus Christ this morning, timing is everything. And the reason I can say this, and I'm almost there, but I want you to grasp this. Timing is everything simply because none of us here this morning know the day in which we will die. Given the manner in which COVID-19 has wreaked havoc on our nation and our world, we don't know where death is. But the Bible says now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Timing is everything. If you haven't made a decision about Jesus Christ, you can make a decision about Jesus Christ right now. Because what is life, says James, but a vapor of smoke that appears for a short time and then vanishes away? Jesus came, according to Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, in the fullness of time, Christ was born. There was a silence between the Testaments for 400 years, but when God spoke in time from eternity, his son was conceived in the womb of a virgin. I was born in a manger. Lived 33 years. And he died at the right moment, the time in which God had assigned for him to die. Not one moment sooner or earlier. But when he died, he died for all of humanity. When they nailed him to the cross, they took him down and they placed him in a tomb. Timing is everything. Because Jesus had already set the stage. Jesus said, destroy this temple in three days I will raise it up again. Timing is everything. They put him in the tomb. They sealed up the tomb because they determined that the possibility of him coming out we could not risk it. But on that third day morning, time is everything. The stone was rolled away. Jesus came out of the grave and he walked this earth for 40 days. He was ascended into heaven. He's at the right hand of the Father making intercessions for us. But he is coming back again. Peter is talking about a very interesting Greek term. It's called parousia. That is the coming of Jesus Christ God says, I am sending my son back to not only make the world new, but there'll be a new heaven and a new earth. Timing is everything. Don't be discouraged for what you see and what you feel. I want you to know Jesus understands where you are, what your frustrations are, what you're going through, but wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Wait, I say, on the Lord. 
Peter wants to convey. The Lord's return seems to be long. But he's interested in people being saved. The key this morning for us is to make sure that people know who Jesus Christ is. Just a couple of things I want to leave with you. To help you in your walk of faith. Because timing is everything. You don't, you don't know where death is. Number one, God directs. Proverbs 16 and 9 tells me we can make our plans, but the Lord directs our steps. Timing is everything. We can, we can set plans in place, but unless God approves of those plans, they will not come to fruition. We are all guilty of pre-planning. Our future, sometimes it is good, but many times it is not. When we create a long-term plan in our hearts, we then quickly find ourselves disappointed and even lost. But if we confide in the Lord and let him bring us to where we need to be, there isn't any room for disappointment. God directs. Secondly, his timing. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. For everything there is a season, a time for every activity under the sun. There is an end to what we're going through. We cannot see it, but there is an end to it. That end is with God. There's a reason for it. Solomon is conveying very clearly here in Ecclesiastes there's a time to plant and there's a time to pluck up that which is planted. There's a time to be born and there's a time to die. Timing is everything. God never promised us our life on earth would be easy. But he did say that there is a time and a season for everything. Thirdly, live for today. Proverbs 27 and 1. Don't brag about tomorrow, since you do not know what the day will bring. Recognizing each day we rise from our beds, we have only God to thank. You ought to take the time to tell God thank you for all that he's done in your life and will continue to do in your life. Time is everything. Will you surrender your heart to him? This moment in time has been orchestrated by God that you would hear this message that God is not slack concerning his promises. That he desires that every person come to repentance. That everyone have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And if you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ right now, you can by simply confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and you will be saved. Finally, this is an area that I struggle in and maybe it's an area you struggle in. Wait patiently. Wait patiently and wait quietly. Lamentations. Three. 25 and 26 the Lord is good to those who hope in him to the one who seeks him it is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord the last thing we think of doing in bad situation is waiting we all want to return to the sanctuary we want worship to return to what it once was a few months ago but the Lord is simply saying Timing is everything. Wait on the Lord. The scripture says, and be of good courage. Wait, I say, on the Lord. We tend to act hastily without actually thinking or feeling the issue.
to avoid certain emotions or the reality of our choices. Waiting on God can be difficult sometimes. But when you wait on Him, God has promised to never leave you nor forsake you. God has promised to rescue you in your moment of trouble. Timing is everything. When we put our hope in the Lord, we find that we can stand quietly and still, giving it over to God since he's in control in the first place. God is always good and has given us the gift of salvation through his son, Jesus Christ. We should stand still in the middle of a storm and know God is there and is in control. Because timing is everything. Bow your heads right where you are. Peter conveys here that the earth be dissolved the elements are going to be burned up then in verse 11 he says what kind of person ought we to be given the climate in which we live you truly need a relationship with Jesus father we thank you and praise you for this moment we glorify your name someone here this morning that's hurting wrestling with issues, health issues, financial issues, wondering when the cloud will move away. It's been raining in somebody's life. The storm winds of adversity has been blowing. But yet here we are this morning, God, giving you the praise, the glory, and the honor because you told us in the word that in this world we would have tribulation. But be of good courage. You've overcome the world. For the Christian who's living a carnal life. These past three months, God, we've had an opportunity to use our time wisely. Many of us have not. So I'm praying that you would convict the believers this morning. Convict them of sin and unrighteousness. Bring them to a place where they would lay before you, God, and ask you to heal the hearts, to grant them peace. Lord, when we open the word, speak ever so clearly. I pray for this church. I pray for this nation, our president your county. I pray for the fear that has gripped some believers. They're afraid because of COVID-19. I know, God, that what's taking place is serious. But I also know that you are the sovereign God. You're in charge. You said no weapon formed against us should prosper. So protect us, guide us, grant us peace. As we leave now, God, we pray your traveling grace and mercy would go with us. I ask that you would open opportunities this coming week that we might share our faith. We won't take this time for granted because timing is everything. There's a reason why. We can't assemble in the churches. There's a reason why. The nation is where it is right now. Because you're the God. Who's simply sending a very clear message. If my people. Will call by my name. Would humble themselves. And 
turn from their wicked ways and pray. Then will I hear from heaven and heal the land. The land is sick. Your church right now is sick. We need healing. It is in Jesus' glorious name I pray and ask. Amen. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Next Sunday morning, we will have communion for you. Right after the message, we will have communion here in the parking lot for you. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day.